In this video, we're going to have a look at question 11 from the 2016 HSC Mathematics Tuner exam. So, part A. Sketch the graph of x minus 3 or squared plus y plus 2 or squared equals 4. Alright, let's write it down. x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 4. Now, this question is of or this function rather, is of the form x minus h or squared plus y minus k or squared is equal to r squared. And, and hopefully you should know that this is a circle. So the circle has a center at h comma k and has a radius of r. So in our case, <clears throat> h comma k is 3, and my k is negative 2, because I need to account for this being a negative here, while here it's a positive. So it's negative 2, and my radius is, well, the square root of 4, which is 2. So now I can go ahead and draw my circle. So hopefully, if you were doing an exam, your diagram would be much neater than mine is going to be. Now we go across 3, 1, 2, 3, and we go down to 1, 2. So there, that's 3, comma negative 2. <clears throat> that's our center, <clears throat> pardon me, and we're going in a radius of 2 units. So we're going to touch the x-axis here, we're going to go around to about 5 units, and then go down 2 units. And something like this, although this is very, very poorly drawn. But this is 3, comma negative 2, and I have a radius of 2 units. So although this is very poorly drawn, I will get, I should get full marks for this because I have the correct center. I've labeled my radius as 2. And I've also shown that it touches precisely at one point here on the x-axis. And that it doesn't touch the y-axis. Okay. And that's all we have to do for part A. Part B. It says to differentiate x plus 2 divided by 3x minus 4. <clears throat> okay. So I'm differentiating x plus 2 divided by 3x minus 4. Now I need to recognize that this is a quotient, so I'm going to be using the quotient rule for differentiation. And just to remind yourselves, the quotient, rule, the quotient rule, if I have u divided by v, is going to be v u dash minus u v dash divided by v squared. Alright, so let's go ahead and apply this rule to this function. So, <clears throat> my v is 3x minus 4 and my u is x plus 2. So v is 3x minus 4 multiplied by the derivative of the top which is just 1, minus what's on the top, multiplied by the derivative of what's on the bottom. So the derivative of the uh, denominator is 3. And I divide this by the square of the denominator. There we have that. So now I just have to simplify a little bit. Alright, this is 3x minus 4. This is going to be negative 3x, and it will be negative 6. Okay, dividing by 3x minus 4 or squared. And so this 3x and this negative 3x cancel. I'm left with negative 10 divided by 3x minus 4 or squared. And that should be your final answer. Part C. Solve the absolute value of x minus 2 less than or equal to 3. Alright, so absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 3. Now, another thing to remember, if I have the absolute value of x is less than a, all that means is I'm writing this in a more compact way. I'm writing it as, I'm writing this, what I'm about to write. x is in between negative a and a, and so this is just a more compact way of writing this. So I'm going to use this here, and I'm going to have negative 3 is less than or equal to x minus 2 
is less than or equal to positive 3. And since I want x by itself, I'm solving for x. So all I need to do is just add 2 to every part here. So adding 2 to negative 3 gives me negative 1. Adding it to x gives me just x. Or adding it to x minus 2 gives me just x. And adding it to 3 gives me 5. And that's part C. Let's get some more paper. Part D. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x plus 1 or cubed dx. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar with how to do this type of an integral. But if you're not, that's okay because it's actually given to you on the back of the exam paper in the formula sheet. We're given that the integral of ax plus b to the power n dx is equal to ax plus b to the n plus 1 divided by a times n plus 1 plus c. And this only holds, this um, raising the power and dividing by the power only holds if this is a linear function, which we have here. So we can use this rule. All right, so <clears throat> integrating this function is going to be 2x plus 1. We add 1 to the power, so it's 4. We divide by the new power, and we also divide by the inside derivative of the linear function. Now, if it was a quadratic, our derivative would involve something in terms of x, and so we can't divide by that because um, it's, not, it's not constant, and so it's not going to work here. That's why it only works with linear functions. So, dividing by the inside derivative is 2. And I'm evaluating between 0 and 1. So, if I substitute 1 in, I'm going to have 2 times 1, plus 1, so that's 3 to the power 4, and 3 to the power 4 is 81, so 81 divided by 8, minus, substituting 0 in, I have 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1, so 1 to the power 4 is 1, divided by 8, so that's 80 divided by 8, which is 10, and that's that one done. The next one, part E. Find the points of intersection of y equals negative 5 minus 4x and y equals 3 minus 2x minus x squared. So, <clears throat> I have two lines and I want to find their intersections. So, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to solve them simultaneously because that will give me the points of intersection. Here's 1 and 2. So, I'm equating 1 and 2 or substituting 1 into 2. It's the same thing. Minus 5 minus 4x is equal to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. Now let me get everything onto one side. So I'm going to bring all of these onto the left-hand side. So bringing this negative x squared over will become positive x squared. Now, I'm bringing a negative 2x over, so it's going to become positive 2x, but I also have a negative 4x here. So I have negative 4x plus 2x will give me negative 2x. I have a negative 5 here, but I'm bringing over what was a positive 3. When it comes over, it will become a negative 3. So that means negative 5 minus 3 will be negative 8, equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic. I'd like to factorize this. So I need two numbers that multiply to give negative 8 and add to give negative 2. Those numbers would be negative 4 and 2. All right? If I multiply these together, I get negative 8. If I add them, I get negative 2. So I have x minus 4 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. And so therefore I have x equal to 4 or negative 2. Okay, so now I was told for the points of intersection. So a point means I need an x and a y coordinate. So when x is equal to 4, now I could substitute into either of these, it would give me the exact same answer, but probably substituting into 1 would be better because well, this is linear, and this is a quadratic. So if I substitute into number 1, I have y equals negative 5 minus 4 times 4. So negative 5 minus 16, which is negative 21. So one point is 4 comma negative 21. And if I substitute into negative, uh, negative 2 into 1, I have y equals negative 5 minus 4 times negative 2. So that's negative 5 plus 8, which is 3. And so my other point would be negative 2, comma 3. Right, and so these two points here are my points of intersection. Great, the next part, F. 
Find the gradient of the tangent to the curve y equals 10x at the point where x equals pi on 8, and then give your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, so I'm finding the gradient to the curve y equals 10x. So when I have a function and I want to work out a gradient at a particular point, I need to differentiate. So dy divided by dx equals the derivative of 10x is sec squared x. Now I want to find the gradient of the tangent at the point x equal to pi on 8. So I substitute that in. dy on dx is equal to sec squared x, or sec squared of pi on 8 rather. Now I need to put this into a calculator because it's not an exact value. So when I get my calculator, I realize that I don't have a sec button, but I know that sec is 1 on cos, and so sec squared is 1 on cos squared. So it's 1 on cos squared of pi on 8. And always be sure to make sure that your calculator is in radian mode when you're dealing with radians. So 1 divided by, well first let me write in brackets, in a, in a fraction form, cos pi divided by 8, and then I can square that entire thing. And so I get 1.171572 dot dot dot, that's enough. I want three significant figures, so 1.17, and that's to three significant figures. And that's part F done. And let's get some more paper for the last part. Okay, for the final part, part G, solve sine of x on 2 equals a half for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 pi. So my domain is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, now my domain is for x, but I'm dealing with an x on 2. So it's a good idea to write my domain in terms of x on 2. So if I divide everything by 2, of course dividing 0 by 2, it remains a 0. x by 2 gives me x on 2, and 2 pi divided 2 gives me just pi. Now I want to solve this thing here. So when is sine equal to a half? Well we know that that's 30 degrees or pi on 6 radians. So x on 2 equals pi on 6. But is there any other place within 0 and pi where sine is going to be a half? Well a half is positive and we know sine is positive in the first and the second quadrants. Remember the mnemonic or stations to central. Everything or all functions are positive here, only sine is positive here, only tan, only cos. So we're looking at sine, so we're looking in the first and the second quadrants. And that is within our domain here for x on 2. This is within 0 and pi. So I do have to consider the second quadrant, and the angle would be pi minus pi on 6. All right, and that's going to be 5 pi on 6. But of course I'm solving for x. I'm not solving for x on 2, so I just multiply everything by 2, and I get pi on 3 and 5 pi on 3. And these are my solutions, and that's the end of question 11.